Hey everyone, I'm Mike Prue from Hill Holiday and I am joined by colleagues of mine from our broadcast TV department as well as members of the digital strategy team. We thought it'd be fun to take a look at the new fall TV shows. 35% of fall TV shows and new TV shows fail, uh, looking at data over the past few years. And so we wanted to marry the actual ratings and impressions of broadcast TV with how people are talking about them online in social media channels. Laura, as you were looking at the numbers based on Twitter, uh, as well as comparing it with the actual impressions, what, what jumps out at you? Um, the Undercovers stood out first because they actually were the only um, show that we measured where the Twitter mentions outweighed the broadcast impressions. When we look at the social sentiment graph, um, it's sentiment for the for the show as it was starting to air was increasing and it spiked during the show. The other one I wanted to bring up was Law and Order LA because I think um, that to me is interesting. A lot of these shows are the kind of episodic shows where you need to tune in kind of every time and keep up with the what's going on in the plot, whereas Law and Order LA is, comes from another type of genre, the type of show you can tune in, they tie up the whole story essentially by the end of the hour. and. Um, even though the social sentiment um, was kind of average on that and Twitter mentions weren't high, the overall broadcast impressions were huge. So I like that to me is a, a sign of uh, good things. Yeah, we joke that anywhere you put Law & Order it succeeds, <laughs> no matter which one it is, and it runs everywhere on every cable network and it's run for a, a really long time. It has a built-in audience that people um, will find Law and Order. Uh, so this is one that I'm not surprised is, is succeeding. Yeah. It sort of falls into what we talked about before is same old, same old. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's not like there's a lot of new going on with that show, but I think it meets a need that there's an audience that likes that kind of programming. And piggybacking on what she said, I think there's something, um, Guy and I were discussing this earlier, with somewhat of a challenge in these procedural type shows which CBS is heavy on and some of the other networks in terms of Twitter mentions because mm -hmm. you know I, I we were talking about earlier I kind of use the whole like um, the Reagan phrase which is like the silent majority which he used in the 1980s which was kind of like these people that watch the shows and the show doesn't have necessarily the engagement that a lost has when you want to tweet everything about it and you want to see what your friends are thinking about it and at least you know there is that huge discussion of I want to be where people are going to be talking about something the next day at the water cooler which kind of Twitter has become and with some of these other shows you know the, they draw a big audience you know lost and NCIS had the exact same adults 18 to 49 rating season to date last year but I would think if you would compare them you know mentions online I would think lost would probably blow it out of the water it's a real lean back kind of experience with a show like that as opposed to a loss where you're all engaged in it and you want to have the conversation right then, right exactly. there. What about the show Nikita? Um, I know it's not on one of the big three networks, uh, so the, the, you know, the ratings are <coughs> relatively seemingly lower, mm -hmm. and the conversation um, seems to be really low on Twitter as well. Um, does, does this indicate that maybe it's one that, that's not going to last? Yeah, I think so. I think um, Nikita's one where you would look for um, a lot of online discussion about people talking about because the ratings aren't going to be high. It's on the CW, but if you look at it compared to Hellcats, mm -hmm. which you know yeah. ratings, impressions-wise, it's delivering about the same, but people are talking about it. I think you'll see Hellcats will be more successful than Nikita. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, relatively speaking, Hellcats. Um, does have a little bit less ratings than Nikita, but the conversation about it yeah. is, is really, really strong. Mm -hmm. yeah. To be honest with you, I thought that the social conversation for the CW shows would have been higher than the ratings because the CW doesn't generate huge ratings, but I thought that because it would have been a younger demographic that there would have been a lot more conversation on it and it, it didn't really bear out with the numbers. And also another thing with CW that's interesting is so much time shifting. I mean, I mm -hmm. think we, we have a little bit of an uh, of a preview of what the fall season because they, they premiered a week earlier than everybody else and they're yeah. You know, we have access to the live plus seven, which is, you know, the live rating plus seven days of DVR. And I think 90210 picked up 45% audience on adults 18 to 49 or some, some huge number. So, you know, I th the CW has its niche, but it doesn't necessarily have a lot of shows that people are like, I need to watch this live, I need to watch it right now. It might be just a little bit lower on the DVR mm -hmm. scale. That's a really good point because we're measuring only the Twitter conversations that are happening mm -hmm. when the show is airing live, a little bit time shifted because we're taking yeah. into account the, the different time zones. Mm -hmm. There could be uh, lots of other conversations that's yeah. happening later on in the week after the show airs. Hellcats was one of the shows that I did notice kind of a prolonged elevation and overall um, conversation so week over week that kind of that data did trend higher
what's going on with Better Together um, on ABC? And, and the reason I ask is, uh, you know, seemingly fairly strong ratings, barely any social conversation, and the sentiment is a big drop mm -hmm. um, before the show airs and then, and then during. And I know it's hard for a name like Better Together because it's part of the common lexicon sure. to really hone in on whether or not they're talking about the TV show. Does that have any play into it? Or do we think that people just aren't talking about it? I think that does have something to do with it. They also changed the name of that show oh, like a week or two before the premiere. Mm -hmm. It was... Better um, With You, I think. Better With You. Originally, I think. And no, so just... not to say that that would be a huge... Um, reason for people to stop, you know, talking or mentioning the show, but I think between that and then the kind of common lexicon of figuring out how people would be talking about it, that might be a, a reason why the social ratings on this are so low. And it, it, from a rating standpoint, it's in a really protected spot in the lineup. It's in a hammock position on ABC between the middle and modern family. So um, people are just kind of following through and it's it's kind of got some yeah. almost artificial ratings. Yes. Yeah, this is one I think would be interesting to follow a little bit longer to see if those ratings numbers start to decline. This is mm -hmm. another one that we did not think was very good coming out of the upfront. We didn't have high hopes for it. It's success is probably driven by you know its position on the network but I think this is one to follow and it's the only one of that night that's kind of the traditional sitcom if you if the other shows you know that, that are around it are kind of more of that modern vein of you know the, the kind of the documentary format of modern family and you know the mm -hmm. um, Malcolm in the middle format of the middle and then that one is just kind of the traditional laugh track kind of CBS sit you know down and watch it which I think might also have a little bit of play about it socially that's interesting is there anything else that jumps out at us from the, from the analysis we did? No Ordinary Family, to me, again, low conversation around mm -hmm. this one. This one got a lot of hype, a lot of um, promotion for this one, um, a pretty recognizable cast, and mm -hmm. uh, you know the ratings did pretty well, uh, which is great. There's not a lot of talk um, about it in terms of Twitter mentions, um, so this is another one that I think will be interesting to follow. Well, that one had increasing positive sentiment as well leading up to the show and even, yeah. even during. Which yeah. was fairly rare in the data that we saw. Usually we yeah. saw it start high, kind of at a hype level and drop yeah, off. Yeah. And this yeah. one started kind of almost like Dark Horse style. Yeah. Not a lot of um, positive sentiment and then a huge spike up and didn't drop off too drastically. Um, since we're two weeks into uh, the new season, or a few weeks into the new season, there's been a couple of shows that have already gotten canceled. Lone Star uh, on Fox is one of them, and then My Generation from ABC was the other. Um, you know, and the surprising thing is, you know, the My Generation was the one that was getting a real lot of hype pre uh, launch because they had the iPad app and, you know, there was a lot of buzz about it. Okay, you know, I, I was really interested in that because it did have a ton of hype. They were using um, a lot of new digital advertising tactics like um, sponsored trending Twitter topics. The iPad app got a lot of hype in, in the beginning, as you mentioned. Uh, they did a, a YouTube uh, masthead, um, so a lot of a lot of buzz. Um, but at the end of the day, it didn't make it. So I mean, does I, it does I, it just come down to content? Yeah, good? I, and that's what I was going to say. I think yeah. the most important thing, and I think what that's a great example of, if it's not good content, you can do all you want around it, but people aren't going to watch it. So you can invest in all of those things and talk about it, but it comes down to first and foremost, the content has to be there. And what's interesting about the two shows that have been canceled so far, Lone Star actually was one that most people thought was going to be a success. There was a lot of promotion around it. People really liked it. When we watched it, we thought it was going to be good. Um, the characters, we thought it was well cast. Um, but I don't think any of us felt like my generation was going to succeed, even with all the stuff they were doing around it. So do we put ourselves on the spot? What do we think are the next couple of shows to, to get canceled? I think the, the whole truth is probably clock is ticking. That's been airing on Wednesday nights at ABC at 10 p.m. And um, it's struggled mightily in that. You know, it's up against Law and & Order, and I think people kind of made a choice that if they're going to go with the legal trauma at 10, they're going to go with maybe a proven name there. Yeah. So I think that one's in a lot of trouble. We already talked about Nikita. Yeah, maybe I not think last Nikita is one of them. I think Outlaw is probably another one that might not be long for this world yes. either. Um, NBC show. It's a Friday night show, so they can afford to let it go you know, a few right. weeks before they really pull the plug on it because there isn't a whole lot of competition on Fridays, but hasn't hasn't been that strong so far. Thanks for tuning in. We've been talking about what we think is going to happen with the new fall TV lineup, um, converging social conversation with the actual TV ratings. So stay tuned, keep watching TV, and let's see what ends up happening.